And today, I'm going to be showing you how to fix this old clock radio. So I was at a garage sale, and I saw this clock radio for about $11, so I purchased it. Now, this clock radio uses something called vacuum tubes, and vacuum tubes were a way of amplifying electric signals before transistors came around. So, if you look in the back, you can see all of the vacuum tubes that make this clock radio function. But, upon plugging it in, it just made this horrible 60 hertz hum. Which means that this clock radio is broken and it needs to be repaired. So in this video, I'm going to go through showing you how to clean out this uh, clock radio and repair everything so it works like normal. So, let's get started. So the first thing you'll need to do with this clock radio is turn it around and remove this back cover. Now this back cover is what covers up all the tubes. Now just to remove this back cover there will be two screws holding it in and after you remove those screws you can pull it out to see everything inside. You can then proceed to removing the internal chassis. Now you can just slide this out and as you can see right here is the internal chassis. This is what contains all the vacuum tubes, which are this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and the two IF transformers, and all the other components that make this vacuum tube radio work. As you can see underneath are all the capacitors and resistors and other electronic components that this uses. Now, if we look in the back, this is uh, really dirty, and this whole speaker has fallen apart. As you can see from looking at the front, the speaker literally does not exist anymore. Now, upon plugging in this radio, as you can see here, the speaker starts oscillating, and as you can see, all you can hear is a 60 hertz hum. Now, this means that this vacuum tube uh, radio is not working because there's a filter capacitor bad. But, thank goodness, all the vacuum tubes are lighting up, so this means that all the tube filaments are intact. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this wire going from the actual chassis to the clock. Now, these wires that I'm cutting just go straight to AC, and they can be resoldered on after this clock is uh, done being fixed. Now, this cord right here uh, looks really bad. As you can see, the plastic is kind of missing from here, and the cord is all grimy, and, and this kind of looks like a not-so-good electrical connection. So what we're going to do is we're going to also sever the power cord going into the clock. And we'll replace this with a new one later. Both the chassis and the box down to the garage to give it a good air compressor blowdown. Okay, so now that you've cleaned off your radio thoroughly, and your chassis is, and your chassis is all free of dust and any other bad stuff, we can now move on to fixing the speaker. Now, the speaker has an issue where the cone has completely disintegrated. So, what I'm going to do is instead of reconing the speaker, I'm going to insert a new speaker, a smaller speaker, into the place where the old cone used to be. Now, the old speaker had a voice coil resistance of about 4 ohms, so we need to replace it with a speaker that has a resistance of 4 ohms also. Now, to do this, we'll just use the magnetic strength of the magnet on here to hold it to the magnet of the old speaker and this should hold it in very nicely. I will complete this setup by soldering the terminals of this speaker to the terminals of this uh, audio output transformer on the back. Now that the new speaker has been soldered into place, we can remount it back onto the chassis of the stereo using the bolt that it came with. Alright, now that the new speaker has been installed, and is soldered in place to so the audio output transformer, we can rotate the chassis and see all of the capacitors inside. Now, if you look at some of these capacitors, you see a bunch of bubbles on some of them. And this means that these capacitors have leaked because the wax melts and the electrolyte inside them seeps out and these capacitors become bad. So almost every single capacitor you see inside here these yellow cylinders are bad capacitors that will be need, need to be changed. 
Now the good thing about these capacitors is they state their voltage rating and capacitance rating on the side very clearly. And so we can just replace these capacitors with new more modern day capacitors such as this one. And then we will replace every single one of these capacitors by clipping the leads and soldering a new one on. So let's start by replacing this large electrolytic capacitor. So to do that, we'll kind of use our fingers to kind of pry it out. And if we look at this capacitor, we can see that it is rated for 50 microfarads uh, at 150 volts for each side. That means that we have one common ground right here, and then that forms a 50 microfarad link to each one of these wires. So we'll replace this with more modern day capacitors such as this. Now with the electrolytic capacitors, what I did to find these capacitors is I looked in some old power supply boards like this, and inside these boards I found two capacitors one of 50 microfarads and one of 100 microfarads that were rated at both 400 volts, which is perfect because this is only 150 volts. And the reason I chose a 100 microfarad capacitor is because since this is a filter capacitor for the power supply, it doesn't matter if it's a higher uh, capacitance rating because that won't make a difference. It'll just reduce the hum more. So now to uh, replace these ones, these film capacitors, we're going to replace them with these tiny little capacitors. So if you look inside this board, there's about uh, 10 of these little yellow capacitors. I've already taken out a few of them. Now, what happens is each of these capacitors has a value of 0 0.047 microfarads. And you can see it right here. But anyway, this has a value of 0 0.05 microfarads, 200 volts. Well, this one is at 250 volts. So these two capacitors are almost the exact same rating. So we can replace them. And there's about three other capacitors that have this same rating that we can all replace with these little yellow ones. So what I will do is I will cut this little capacitor off and take it off. And then what I'll do is I'll take this new capacitor and solder in one side to one side of where it used to be and then use some wiring to connect the other side. So now that this new um, film capacitor is installed, we can go about installing all the other new film capacitors with all these other new capacitors. So now, as you can see, I've replaced every single capacitor inside this uh, old tube radio. So. All of the leaky electrolytic capacitors were replaced with these brand new electrolytic capacitors. And all of the old film capacitors were replaced with these new film capacitors that won't leak and are much better. This was all done by clipping the components of the old capacitors and then removing them, such as this, and then taking the new capacitor and finding the right value out of many different capacitors that I had laying around inside my parts drawers and other circuit boards. And I took these old capacitors, and I removed them, and I took the new old capacitors and replaced them. I obtained all of the capacitors from my large box of uh, circuit boards. As you can see, these are all the capacitors that I replaced inside the tube radio. Now that everything's been repaired, you can flip over your radio put all the tubes back in, and then test this thing out. So now that everything's been repaired and replaced inside this old tube radio, we can turn on the power to the Variac, and we can see that the tubes are already starting to light up. After a little bit of warm up time on the tube radio, you can hear some radio sound coming out of it. Well, as you can see, the radio is working very well now. So, even after I had tried it in that previous video clip, you may have noticed that the sound wasn't very good, and that it was very quiet, and that there was a lot of crackling and bad noise. 
But now, it sounds very good. So, the reason behind this was inside the radio, there were a few bad components that I had missed. Now, this resistor right here was the one I was talking to you about that had a few issues. Now, the problem with this 470,000 ohm resistor was that it was drifting while it was on for some reason, which means that it caused the plate voltage of this vacuum tube to widely drift between 5 volts and 30 volts, when the actual plate voltage should be about 50 volts. So now that I replaced it with a good resistor, the plate voltage is steady of around 50 volts, like indicated in the schematic. Now, the capacitor that I replaced is right here. This is the leaky capacitor that I was telling you about earlier. And now that this capacitor was changed, as you can see, this radio, when it is not connected to the antenna, it is completely silent, which is very good, because before, it, when it was not connected to the antenna, this radio had all kinds of static and bad noise and popping. Now, as you can see, when the radio is not connected to an antenna and at full volume, it is completely silent. That's because it is working great. But when I connect it into the port on the antenna, if they sign him, you can hear that the sound him, comes back. You know 100%, Jonathan, Adrian Peterson can still play. I, I mean, there, there's, there's no doubt in my mind that he makes it past New England. He gets out. Sure. Um. Tell you about it more when it's about to happen. We have a website up. Uh, who's on, on the line with me? Uh... Well, now that you have your whole radio repaired and everything's working fine, we can replace it back inside its original chassis with the clock and with the new cord. And then we should have a very nice looking old radio. So after painstakingly uh, putting all the wires back together onto the clock mechanism, which has an internal switch that turns on the radio when the alarm goes off. And soldering the new power cord in place and the radio wires back in. And then tightening all the bolts on this metal plate that holds the clock in. It is finally time to insert the restored chassis. Now we can take the chassis that has been fixed. And we can uh, so a little arrange the wires. And then slide the chassis back into the actual radio. You can then securely bolt the chassis to the actual radio using the screws that came with it. Okay, so now that everything is all reinstalled, you can reinstall the back plate, which has an antenna on it, by connecting all the wires as they were originally connected. Now, I'm also going to uh, further make this radio work better by also installing a, an external antenna that goes onto this yellow antenna strand. and It'll go out one of these holes out into an aerial antenna. It'll let this radio get a uh, way better reception. You can finalize your work on the radio by reinstalling the back plate using the pins and screws that came with it. Now that your radio is all put together, we can turn it on and see what it sounds like. Now that I have the radio all inside its case, I'm noticing another problem. As you can see, when I turn the tuning capacitor, the blade of the tuning capacitor moves really close to the AC motor of the clock. And when it does this, it causes lots and lots of 60 hertz hum on this radio. And that is really not good. And so, in order to fix that, I'm going to have to do something. Because that's causing a lot of hum on any of the higher bands of the spectrum. So, as you can see, this radio works very well, making it very loud. So, that is how you fix uh, an old tube radio. So that way it works just like normal again. This tube radio will serve me well sitting on this little stand inside my room. And it will make a cool radio to listen to the talk radio while I'm working in my uh, workshop. It is also cool just to have because it looks really cool and really old. So, now you know how to fix an All-American 5 radio. And, as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.
where I'm going to be showing you how to build a miniature AM transmitter that will transmit your favorite music to this radio, so that way you can hear it, and not just the other talk radio stations that are normally on.